say 65% of end users have KPIs around their uh, energy management. Um, so I want to I want to ask you all to kind of talk about the new energy landscape and, and how these code changes are going to help end users with achieving their KPIs around return on investment of their energy distribution services. Well, I think there is a big change in the 2023 NEC around energy management systems. And I think that that's probably shows the most impact, right? We're used to energy management systems used for compliance with the energy code, but we have now allowances where we can actually size the electrical infrastructure based on the use of energy management system. I know, uh, Toby, in some of, some of the renewable spaces, you're using energy management to manage load to source. Yeah, especially uh, with our utility, we have uh, peak time, so it's nice to be able to run off your battery, energy storage stuff during those high peak times to keep operating costs down. Yeah, you know, the, the way we use electricity is changing. The need for using electricity in situations where we might necessarily, especially in dwelling industry or dwelling units and, and residential buildings is not necessarily going to be the same anymore. So the code has to evolve to make sure that they're ensuring and keeping up with these new technologies. So there is regulation on how these get installed. If there's no code of regulation and it doesn't keep up, then you end up with some, some serious issues out there with some of the way some of this stuff gets installed. Yeah, and I think when you think about backup power systems, whether it's the home, or it's the commercial building, or it's a critical function like healthcare or emergency systems, uh, these new sources, they continuously operate. We're, we're used to those traditional sources to just sort of sit by in a standby mode and they don't start until they're called on to run. Um, energy storage, photovoltaics, wind, these, these systems, fuel cells, they need to run continuously. So all of those abilities to have energy management and supply normal loads or building loads and then provide backup power when they need to. Yeah, and I think it's important to talk about being in this industry, if you are in the renewables and the energy storage, to make sure you are uh, sending out to NFPA about code changes and recommendations that you're seeing in the industry, the new technology that's coming up. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Toby. If you get behind on code and code education, you can be pretty far um, in the dark about what the requirement should be for a safe installation. Yeah. You know, it's also kind of altered the way we look at, at the ability to support emergency and legally required standby systems in, in these facilities as well. You know, for a long time, it's always just been you, you need emergency system backup or legally required system backup, you install the generator. Now new requirements in the NEC or new permissive requirements in the NEC allow to use energy storage systems for those systems uh, in addition or in supplementing a backup generator. Yeah, and that alleviates a lot of concern, right? It, it uses the clean source first and um, you know, can reduce how much like diesel fuel you have to store on site, which is also a concern for aging and keeping that fuel and system ready to run. So, there's lots of benefits here in the way that works, and I think it's a pretty exciting time, this new energy landscape. 